Hi, Eric. This is Mickey Munoz. Uh, this will be the history of the Quasimodo. Uh, my surfing companion and great friend Bobby Patterson and I were returning from Rincon, a day of surfing at Rincon. When Rincon kind of blows out in the afternoon, we we go down the coast highway and uh, we would check um, Sekus, um which we called Point X at the time, and um, Arroyo Secos. And uh, sure enough, on the way back from Rincon, uh, Secus was about head high, maybe a little overhead, and no one out. So Bobby and I decided to go surfing, which we did. Um, and following behind us, uh, maybe a half an hour behind us, was John Severson. John uh, saw us out and decided he would do some filming, so he set up his 16 millimeter Bolex on the beach and started filming us. And uh, I caught a wave, uh, kind of a closeout shore break wave, and and uh, I did, uh, you know, went into a, uh, a sort of a suicide enter the tube stance. And um, that was that, didn't think anything of it. Uh, about two weeks later, John and, and myself were in his little studio at Surfer Magazine going through the footage that he had shot. And uh, in those days, it was uh, uh, Moviola, uh, the reel to reel, and, and you wound, hand wound the reel through a little window. and and you could look at the film frame for frame and history of the Quasimodo 2, number 2. As I was saying, we were rolling through the film on the Moviola and came to this uh, closeout uh, shore break wave and, and uh, we're going through it frame for frame and, and uh, we rolled by this particular frame couple times and, and settled on it. It looked pretty dramatic and uh, graphic. And so uh, in talking about it, uh, I don't remember whether it was John or myself came up with the Quasimodo, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, because of the position, uh, kind of a hunched position on the board. And uh, in those days, we were naming stances after bullfighting maneuvers, uh, the El Telefono and, uh, and uh, Espontaneo, etc. And uh, so it was natural that we named this stance, and we again named it the Quasimodo. Uh, John later on uh, published that in the very first issue of Surfer Magazine, a whole page on Myself and, and the Quasimodo became the uh, sort of uh, uh, premier photograph. And uh, he purposely misspelled Quasimodo so he wouldn't get in trouble. Um, he, uh, he also did another thing. Uh, um, instead, of, instead of reproducing it in color, he blew it up in black and white. And... And that's why it's kind of graphic looking. And for some reason, uh, that particular photograph, uh, History of the Quasimodo, number three. Um, that photograph that uh, John Severson uh, blew up to, uh, uh, or blew up in black and white, was very grainy and graphic. and. And I think it was John's very, his artistic eye that, that one settled on that photograph as well as, as doing it in black and white, uh, made it very dramatic and, and uh, it's stuck over the years as a, as a kind of icon photograph. And, and it was um, actually uh, just a matter of uh, luck and timing that John came along and, and got that film and footage, and I've used that, that um, image 
all through my surfing career as a logo, surfboard logo, and and sort of um, representing um, my surfing life. So that be it. Okay. I'm signing off. Goodbye.